All right, Eric Lowry, good to see you again, buddy. Um, we are back today to to catch up. It's been a while. Um, in fact, gosh, it's been 500 days now, right? 500 days since right. Eric Lowry and the Lowry team made a big move and a big change in, in your business. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, good to see you, first of all, man. Thanks for you, you too, know, dude. coming on here. Let's you know and doing this, but um, like, it's hard to believe when I I I don't know what caused me to think of that, but I went. Holy cow, 500 days. I, in some ways, I feel like it was so long ago that we made this move. And, and yet, and it feels like it went so fast, too. I know that seems, you know, I, weird to say well, it both ways, but it does. I mean, think about it, though. You and I recorded this June of 2021. Like, <laughs> the last year was, you know, the last year in a lot of ways felt really long in and of yep. itself. And also, like, just a second ago. Yep. Um, so, and then anytime you make a big move like this, so obviously, so you, you and your team were at, uh, Keller Williams for a very long time yeah. and highly successful real estate team and really nothing was wrong, but you made a move and you made a big move and you decided to get up and move platforms and move brokerages. And yep. so here we are 500 days later, um, how has, you know, looking back, how has that been? Like, are you, I mean, I think the obvious answer is you're probably glad you made the move, but right. like break, break that down for me a little bit further. Like what's the, been the best thing or in your opinion, the, the coolest thing that's come out of the last 500 days? Yeah. So um, 500 right before COVID last year. Right. Yeah. Right before, good timing. Right. Um, and actually it's, it, it Actually, I say that like, oh, good timing to make a move. And, you know, people tend to think, oh, gosh, changing brokerages in the real estate space. That's like, oh, that's scary. Oh, it's going to hurt my business. Well, the truth of the matter is we had the biggest year we've ever had last year. Hold on. So you you got up and you moved brokerages and you still had the biggest year. Now, when you say that, you mean like you guys sold the most homes like or, or the most volume or whatever or both? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sold the most homes, total volume, the whole shebang, right? Like I, that part. Yeah. You see, well, you see, Eric, you're always messing up, man, because what you didn't know, what everybody says is that when you, when you leave KW and come to EXP, you sell less homes. Like that's the, that's the wrap that we have. So you totally screwed it up, you know, yeah. way I, to screw it up, Eric. I know I'm good at messing things up. Right. Like that. You know okay. what? It's funny. A year or so ago, it was a couple months after we made that move, and COVID was in full force then. And one of my guys on the team said to me, it was Jordan, he said, Do you guys, he said, You and Lisa, Lisa's my wife, the co owner and the director of operations for our team, she says, You and Lisa ever think about how great of a move this was for us and how perfect that timing was? Because we just kept going because of the, you know, the cloud based and the digital mindset, all that stuff that we are, we were already operating in. And I mean, it was just interesting that, that like other people, was, I saw that, I knew it was the right move, but that I guess it felt good that other people saw that too, other people on the team, right? For sure, no doubt. I know um, we had a couple, I've had a couple of phone calls in the last year from people on the team, specifically administratively, because they really, really realized like, hey, nothing has changed. Like our our day-to-day -day business has been, you know, I mean, it's not like they saw COVID coming, but it's, but we are certainly prepared for it. There's no doubt about it. Right. Right. And so what you asked me, what was a big thing? What it was that whole, that, um, you know, coming to this company changed the way I thought about real estate period, because it removed oh. orders. It removed geographic restraints. It removed a number of ceilings that we were bumping up against. Some of them, you know, imposed by just kind of the mindset of that other company and how they operated. And it wasn't in alignment with how I wanted to grow. I, like, I don't want, I don't want borders. I want to be able to do, I want to build as big a business for our people as I possibly can. And I didn't want people telling me no, right? Like I just didn't want that. And so what happened though, Kevin was, so here I sit 500 days later and you go, well, that's all well and good. And you know, Eric, that sounds like there's some angst in that or whatever. And there really wasn't. I just wanted bigger opportunity. But we run a team now that like clearly is no, there are no borders. We have people, um, you know, we have a couple of VAs, but we also have people that just work remotely now in a way that's allowed us to geographically, geographically expand. We have an inside salesperson 
that lives 100 miles away from our, our office. That's we have a awesome. transaction coordinator, our client care coordinator, lives 100 miles away, and yet they're both awesome at what they do. Our agents are in different markets. Uh, we, we've just grown in a way that I thought I wanted to and didn't know I really could. And like all of a sudden I got into here, into this ecosystem. It's not just a brokerage. It's being around people like you and yeah. Fred and, and the influencers that we're all in business with that just make you think bigger. And all of a sudden I'm going, dang, like, I don't know what the limits are now. You know, it's funny you say that because um, when I reflect uh, back on our first uh, probably 500, 500 days or so, it wasn't quite 500 days, but about six or seven months in, we really realized, hey, we should make a change. To, we made a basically made a change to our business model and the way we run our team. That really was a direct impact of having moved to a virtual brokerage and realizing more so how, okay, if they're operating this, this company at the time, it was like 12 or 13,000 agents, nowhere near the, you know, 55,000 or so there are at the time of this recording. Right. Um, I can't wait to see where we're at in 500 more days, by the way. Right. And, and so, uh, you know, it forced us and I'll tell you, that's one of the best changes we've ever made to our business. And, and we didn't, we couldn't look outside of it until after we got to EXP and kind of have the lay of the land. And it's made such a positive impact on our sales business that has brought most importantly, more time and more joy back into our lives around the business and more money, like more profit. Uh, and, and that's not just for Fred and I, that's for basically everybody on the team. And yeah. so it's kind of cool to see how the impact of a change of environment, how a change of mindset and viewpoint, sometimes even from the company level, uh, or the, those around you can really make a big impact on your business. Yeah. Yeah. I remember right after COVID hit and all that. And I remember, um, I don't know who said this, um, but they said, um, one of the beauties of EXP is because we are fully virtual, digital, whatever you want to call it, they can hire the, the company could hire the best talent regardless of where they live. And like we were in Ohio here, you know, we have fantastic broker support. They actually last week hired a third broker. So we have three managing brokers for the state of Ohio, right? Like I've never had the broker support anywhere and that's not a shot at anybody else, but that we have here. But I remember hearing them say like, you know, our payment processing people, one of them lived in Louisiana, but it was they could work from anywhere. And so then that allowed them to just go find the best talent, not constrained by like, oh, they got to live in our city kind of thing. And, and I just said, dang, if that's true for them, why shouldn't it be true for us? Like, why, why can't we find the best talent? I could hire someone um, that lives in Phoenix where you are. Yeah. If I felt like it was the right person, right talent, right? Like it doesn't matter. And that was a pretty awesome realization as well, to be honest. That's awesome, man. I, I love that. And you're right that that is, I, I firmly believe that's one of the unfair competitive advantages we have uh, as a company at eXp Realty versus everyone else. And it's, it's the reason why we're growing so much faster and um, making, you know, as a company, such a large profit uh, because of those, those, those things that allow us to be agile, which by the way, is one of the core values of the company, right. be right. agile, right? Be sustainable. Some of the things that we're accused of not being able to be, we're actually, th that's what we the most are. And so, uh, yeah, I love that. I think that's a great point. So, okay. 500 days in, um, you, you talked about your biggest surprise or, or most pleasant, pleasant thing around it. Yep. Um, has there been, has there been any one thing that just like, maybe it wasn't like the, the coolest thing or the best thing, but it was like, oh, wow, I just didn't even think about that when I was making this decision to, to come on over here. And, and if so, what would that be? Yeah, it, what, there was. And that would be, it, the, the simple answer is it was the EXP stock part, right? And, <laughs> yeah. And, and, but what I really mean by that is, I mean, I knew about it. You had shared it with me for sure. I mean, I knew there was stock, it was, but it wasn't even a reason we made a move. Um, but the surprise part of it, Kevin, was it had nothing to do with me. I was surprised how my agents on my team reacted to that opportunity. I didn't see that coming. And I yeah. remember when they started getting, you know, the first time they got an award, at their first closing of the XP, they got some stock and it made them an owner. And they, like me, had never really been the owners in their brokerage before at any level. And, and like, they were excited by that. And it kind of caught me by surprise. I mean, I've said this before, but I was like, it kind of stopped me. I went, oh, wow. Like, it's so in the cool. coolest sort of way. I got, you know, that they were that excited about it was 
a surprise and it was super awesome. It's that, 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 it, was, that is so cool, man. That is, and it, you know, constant theme. I hear that not just from the agents on my team, um, but from, from agents all around this country uh, that I get to talk to about it. And uh, you know, there's, there's no doubt um, that is, man, that's just one of the big advantages. You know, I'll share a story with you, Eric. I don't know if I've actually said this to you. I, I've said, maybe I've said it in front of you. Um, but one of the things for me is when you, when you reached back out, because anybody uh, who's, who heard our first update or anything, or, or even when you first came over 500 days ago, knows that a year and a half before moving over, you, you effectively told me no. But I, re but no, then, I let's rephrase that. I didn't effectively told you no. I mean, I you, said, you said, you said, no, nah, man, it's not for me. No, I'm not doing it. I'm busy. I'm building a business. I, I, I love you, Kevin, but no. I said, you no. Said, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't for you, right? But then when you came back, you had this like, Oh, uh, is this healthcare thing any good? I'm like, dude, does it really matter? Like, is that really what you're like? Are you asking me that? Or are you like, are you just want to open the dialogue and you're like, well, no, it doesn't really matter. But I was like, well, shit, I got to go find out now if this is any good. And not like full confession here when they had just rolled it out a week or two before. And I'm sure if we looked in our message history, I probably said, dude, this probably sucks, but I don't know. And so, cause that was what I thought about it, whether I actually had verbalized it or not. So I went and looked at it and I, I actually, so I enroll, I signed up to get like a consultation and I ended up enrolling and saved over nine grand last year on, in, on health insurance. And we'll save over nine grand again this year on health insurance. It's been a huge win for my family and I, just because you asked me about healthcare and I was like, I guess I better go learn about it. And I was like, Oh, that's for me. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I, the same story now, right? Lisa and I are on, on the plan and probably the same one or close to the same one you have. And we're going to, we're going to save this year somewhere between nine and $10,000. Like it, it's huge. And it's a better plan too, by the way, I mean, saving that money is cool, but it's actually a better plan. Like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. exactly it. That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, it it's a, literally just a better plan. There's like more coverage and it's cheaper, which yeah. who doesn't want to save more money. That's right. why I was looking at like, and I thought I read, I mean, like I thought my situation was special, but I think I read recently, like the average savings is like $8,000. Yep. So of all the people that are on the EXP agent healthcare plan, on average, their families are saving eight grand a year. Dude, if you're an independent agent, you, that's half of your cap. Right. So for people that go, oh, it's expensive because maybe they have a lower fee struggle. I'm like, well, okay. So it just went from 16,000 to 8,000. So it's, it's, I mean, it's not that expensive. And in my right. case, it went down from 16 down to seven, right? Because I got nine, I saved over nine grand actually. Yeah. Um, oh, all, sure. all right. So last question for you, I have on this update and sorry to put you on the spot, but like how, how has EXP or being aligned with EXP, how has that changed your mindset going forward? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, it's changed it like in so many ways. I'm not sure I'm not sure what the words are necessarily that I would be able to describe it by. Uh, it's when I think about, um, I don't know, I was a pretty big thinker. I think I was, you know, you, you know me for a while, you coached yeah. me for a while. I, I mean, I think I was a big thinker. And when I look back now, if I could, if I could go back and talk to that guy that right before I jumped on that call, it was December 4th, I believe 2019, when I had said, Hey, is that healthcare any good? And then we got on a Zoom call after you and I, and we talked about EXP, which by the way, was the first time I ever really listened to you about it, right? Like I, I told you no several times without having really listened to the opportunity. But what, if I could go back and just get inside that guy's head or talk to him a little bit, like I'm not the same person. I'm not the same person. It's, um, and I think it's largely being influenced by um, the group of people that we are in business with, you and Fred, I'll give you a little bit of credit, but the other people, um, like, you know, there's just so many now, like, and it's growing, like we do a weekly mastermind call every week, like the people in that group, there's some smart people. There's in some there. seriously smart people in that group. You can't not be affected by being around, you know, it's that age old thing. We've talked about it before. You're the average of the five people you surround yourself with or however you want to phrase that. And it's super true. I've always been a huge believer in that. I thought that was part of the reason why I made the move to EXP in the beginning, because I wanted to be in business with bigger thinkers. I had no idea though the impact it would be, it would have on me. Like it's literally 
um, expanded my thinking and my growth in a way that I, I don't know that I could have envisioned was going to happen. That's awesome, man. I, I love hearing that because I've, um, partially because I, you know, I feel the same way. Um, I've had a very similar experience and I know a lot of other people that have had that too. And quite frankly, my business and my life and the business and life of people around me that I care about are all so much better for it that yeah. it's, um, I never get tired of hearing, of hearing that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, so you asked me about me, right? You said, what's that impact been to me or however you asked that exactly. But I would tell you that um, if you could see the difference, if there's a way to portray it in Lisa and her role and how she's grown, it, it makes me look like, um, like I haven't changed at all compared to how much she's grown, right? And that's like, she's just a whole different person in terms of, um, you know, her role on the team is the same. She was a director of operations when we moved and she's the director of operations now, but um, like she's grown exponentially. Like, I, I mean, it's amazing to watch that. And a lot of our other agents on our team have too, by the way, like we have a lot of people that have grown a lot. And so this has been, yeah, we still sell real estate for sure. That's what we do, right? But it's also yep. been a, quite a personal development growth journey so far. Yeah, yeah, it has been. Um, that's awesome, man. I, I love hearing that. Well, I'm, I'm already excited to do, I don't know if we'll do 750 or 500 or, or I mean, or a thousand or, or both, but we're definitely gonna have to do another update in the future and see how things have played out, uh, since now, uh, you know, recording this here in June of 2021. Um, yeah. but I'm just glad to be doing this now and excited about the journey that we're both on. And, uh, I want to say thanks for, uh, thanks for being open and honest and sharing your 500 day update. Absolutely. Thanks for Thanks for being persistent in like sharing the opportunity, even when I didn't listen. Absolutely. Right? Like I, and a lot of people do that. I know a lot of people say no, like they don't know the whole story or they haven't listened to the whole model. And I, I was certainly guilty of that. So I appreciate that you stayed with me because it's had a huge impact on a lot of people. No, absolutely, man. I, uh, and I think a lot about how, when you said to me, like, damn, I wish you would have pushed me sooner or hard yeah. pushed harder sooner. And, uh, it's, it's, it, that, that's helped me with my mindset too. And a lot of things and realizing sometimes when I'm recruiting, um, I'm actually doing something for the benefit of the other person. It's not all about me. 100%. Dude, if you have just took that first no and said, Oh, Eric's not interested. And we'd have stayed friends and we'd have messaged about business or whatever. And if you hadn't continued to you know, I mean, just reach out periodically and, you know, and, and ask the question again, hey, do you want to look at this or whatever? Like, I don't, um, I'm not sure what that would even look like for, for me and my, my team and my business. Like, I, I mean, I really, that actually makes me feel weird to think about that. Like, I, I me too, actually. That's I just, I, I couldn't even imagine that. I'm glad we don't have to. No, um, I, I don't want, we're not going to imagine yeah. that. But I mean, like, it did make me feel a little weird just thinking about that. So I say that, you know, sincerely when I say I appreciate that you did that, man. Absolutely, man. Well, I love being in business with you and uh, being a friend and uh, looking forward to uh, what's more to come. Absolutely. Talk to you soon. To our guys. Talk to you soon.